Hello everyone, welcome to another Quad Education Test Prep Fundamentals video. My name is Tom and today we're talking about a math topic that truly is fundamental to your ability to be successful on the SAT and ACT. Interestingly enough, it also involves a lot of English skill as well. That topic is translating word problems, so let's take a look. Okay, let's do some translating. So as someone who used to take a whole bunch of language classes uh, way back in the day in undergraduate school, I really like languages, and so I've always enjoyed doing these kinds of problems. I know for a fact that a lot of people do not like them, and so today hopefully I can show you why I like them and make it as straightforward as possible. And what I'll say first of all is in order to be effective at translating, you need to have vocabulary. So you need to know what things mean in both languages. And in, if you're able to do that, it's a pretty straightforward activity to move from one language to the next. So. We're going to take a really simple example here and move from English into math. So the first one here is just very, very straightforward. Half of five is 10. We absolutely know what that means, right? Half of five is definitely 10. But what we need to do is turn this into math because when we get to our word problems later with more words than this, it's not going to be quite as straightforward. So we know how to express half as math, right? That's just one over two. Of is a little more interesting. We're going to Save that for later, just like anything that's difficult on these tests. If it's difficult, don't do it yet. 10, probably a lot easier. I know what that is. That's a number. Is, we're going to go ahead and say that's the same thing as equals. And then 5 is also a number. And so what we need to do here is decide what mathematical operator will make sense for half something 10 equals 5. And so a lot of people will think that this is going to be divide. But 12, 1 half divided by 20, 10 is 1 20th. And Half of 10 is not 1 20th, that is just not the case. And so what we're faced with here is we know what of has to mean, and what of has to mean is multiply. And that's probably the most difficult word to translate on these tests that you'll see, and that's why I'm starting out with it, just because if you can remember that of means multiply, then you're in pretty good shape for doing translating equations. So first thing out of the way, let's move on. So now let's talk about other reasons that they can be difficult. So beyond the word of, I think what people famously find difficult about these word problems is that they are long, rambling, and confusing. And so if you've ever heard that classic, if I have 25 watermelons in my wheelbarrow and I'm going up a hill with a grade of two, how many watermelons are likely to fall out if I decide to go four miles an hour faster or something ridiculous like that that's completely inapplicable to the world and yet is on a test for some reason? And so that sort of long, rambling word problem is what people often complain about when they say that they don't like doing math sections in the SAT and ACT. And I can totally understand that because there's a whole lot of words and it's very easy to get confused and lost in all of the details in there. And so what we'd like to do instead today is provide a solution for how to avoid getting bogged down in the details. And the best way to do that that I found is to start with the end. So with any word problem that's more than three or four sentences, what the test will always do is include the prompt, the question, what you're actually solving for, as the last clause. And so go there first. You know, a lot of the details that are included in these word problems are extraneous. That's to say that they don't really deserve to be there other than to confuse you. And that's their entire purpose. And so one way to really be specific with what those relevant details uh, will be in the question is to first look at the question itself. So use a backward solving approach to say, what do I want? And then go find what you need, as opposed to look at all this stuff that I have, what's actually important. And so before we look at a quick example walkthrough, I want to just provide you with some good vocabulary here. And so all of these would be great candidates for flashcards. So on one side, it would say of, and the other side would say multiply. And so that way, if you're being really specific with what words mean in these tests, then you'll be really effective at translating. And also just generally effective, because if you're the more specific you can be with words on these tests, the better. So let's just kind of look through these and see what we have. Of here, multiply, I already spoke about that. Less than, but is means minus, but is reversed. So for example, this is one of the other kind of tricky ones. So if you saw something like three less than seven is four. That does not mean three minus seven equals four because it doesn't. The way that we say this is the opposite of the way that we write it in math. So this is seven minus three equals four. So other than that, these are mostly pretty, pretty intuitive and self-explanatory. 
equal to and the same is the same thing as is and both of those just indicate the equal sign if you see a variable um, in this case you're just going to do x or n or any letter I, I tend to say pick a relevant variable so if you're talking about something like french fries and hamburgers in a question i would do f and h rather than x and y just because that's one fewer thing to have to remember as you're doing these questions so uh, instead of going oh what's x is x hamburgers or fries i don't know you go f is fries because it's an f Next, we have more than or the sum. That just means add. Getting more technical, the word product does mean multiply. Um, so does of, but product is that word that means multiply. Uh, and then I'll also just quick note, you know, this is of by itself. Of being a really common preposition, you'll often see that of is in some other context in conjunction with other words, like three to the power of four. There's no multiplying there. It's just three to the fourth. Next thing here, quotient just means divide, and percent is just going to be the, whatever that number is divided by 100 times 100%. So that's going to be our percentages. For more information on percentages, go check out our percentages video just to give you a better idea of what's going on with those. Okay, so let's put this all together and walk through one of these before we go to our example problems proper. So we've got big, long, whole bunch of words, and let's take a look at the end first. So if the top seller sold twice as many boxes as the second best seller, and together they sold 25% of the total number of boxes. How many boxes did the second best seller sell? Interesting. Okay, so let's look at the rest of the context and see what's going on here. At a school fundraiser, students are selling boxes of chocolates to raise money for new sports equipment. Each box of chocolates contains 15 chocolates and is sold for 10 bucks per box. Student aims to raise 1,200 to encourage students to sell more boxes. The school decides to award a prize to the top seller. The prize costs 100 bucks. At the close of the competition, the students had exceeded the goal set and raised a total of 1,600 bucks. And so what we can see here is a lot of this information is pretty unnecessary. OP, no. OP, OP, no. So we say that we, we sold, we really don't care about this or this or this. This is all unnecessary because we know that we sold 1600, we raised $1,600 and it's $10 per box. So we raised, we, so they sold rather 160 boxes. And they tell us that the top seller, or rather that together the top and second top seller sold 25% of those boxes. And so then we have 40 boxes that they sell they sold together. And so what we know then is 40 equals the, and so we also can associate that the, the second best seller. So this is the, I'll go S, two times the second best seller is equal to one times the top seller. And so we know that the top seller plus the second top seller is equal to 40, and we can rearrange that to be, or the substitute to say 40 is equal to 2s plus s. That's going to be 3s. 3s equals 40, and then we'd simply solve and say that wherever that top seller was, they sold uh, 40 over 3 boxes, which apparently they can do fractional boxes, but you know what we've done here is just basically turn all this all these words into some pretty straightforward math. So 160, uh, 1600 divided by 10, divided by four, and then just a little bit of simple algebra here to solve for the top and bottom seller. Okay, so now as usual, we have two example problems for you to solve on your own. So go ahead and take a look and see what you can do. Okay, let's take a look. So going to the end here, what is the total cost of purchasing three mystery novels during the promotion? So we're buying some books. And looking at the question itself, so at a local bookstore, there is a special promotion on mystery novels. If you buy two mystery novels, you get a third mystery novel for 50% off. Regular price of each novel is $12. So pretty straightforward here. We have novel, novel, novel. So if there was no promotion, it would be 12 and 12 and 12. But one of these right here is 50% off. So that one's going to be 6. And so 12 plus 12 is 24. 24 plus 6 is 30. So... Pretty easy one here. Maybe the next one here is going to be a little bit more challenging. Okay, here's our next one. I went ahead and made this one free response. So see what you can do. Okay, let's take a look. So looking to the end, if the price of product B is $50 per unit and the total revenue generated by both products was $20,000, what is the price of product A? So they say a company sells two types of products, product A and product B. The company sold 40 more units of product A than product B last month. The total revenue generated by product A was 50% greater than the total revenue generated by product B. 
if the price of product B is $50 per unit and the total revenue for both is 20 grand, what's the price? So we've got a whole lot of stuff going on here. So an interesting thing to note here, or rather an important thing to note is revenue is equal to the quantity times the price. So that makes sense. The amount of money that you make is just going to be how much it is times how much it costs. And so what we know is that the revenue of A plus the revenue of B is going to equal $20,000. We also know that the revenue of A is going to be 1.5 times the revenue of B because this right here, we say 1.5 times the revenue of B is equal to plus the revenue of B equals $20,000. The nice thing we can do is 1.5 of something plus 1 of something is going to equal 2.5 of something. And we can go ahead and solve for the revenue of B by dividing both sides by 2.5. So that means that the revenue of B is going to be $8,000. And so now we can calculate actually the quantity of B using our revenue equation. So revenue is going to be quantity times price, and that's quantity times the price, which we know to be 50. And 8,000 divided by 50 is going to be 160. So we know we, hold, we sold 160 of B. Now we can implement this 40 more units of A than of B last month. So we know that our quantity for B was 160, then we must have sold 40 more for quantity A. So our quantity of A is going to be 200. And what we also know is that our revenue of B is 8,000, and our revenue of A is 1.5 times that. So that is to say that our revenue of A is going to be 8,000 times 1.5, which is 12,000. That means that our quantity times our price is equal to 12,000. And since our quantity we know is 200, times our price, we can divide 12,000 by 200 to get our price of A, which is going to be 60. Okay, that's it for this video. Remember, translating from English into math is just like any other translation activity. In order to be effective, you need to have all the necessary vocabulary to move from one language to the other. So there's a good use of flashcards there to make sure that you know all those terms. Anyway, if you found this material useful, we hope that you'll like and share the video and subscribe to Quadrant Education. If you require any tutoring, please be sure to reach out to us. Thank you for watching, and I hope you have a great day.